N95 mask just in case. Okay. Okay. Hi, guys. Good morning to you. We're here with Commander Esparza here with Brooks County Sheriff's Department. And this is, you guys are about 40 miles up from the border, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. About 40 miles up. They are right around the 281 checkpoint, which is the busiest and the oldest checkpoint out here. So what they've been dealing with over the last, well, how many months are we in now? 10 months. Ten nine months, nine months, I suppose. So since January, they now have 98 uh, bodies that they have recovered that are migrant bodies. And on a normal year, Sheriff Martinez was telling me you're about 50. Between so you're already, you're already almost double. Yes. And, and we still got some time left. We still have some time left. Okay. Uh, we expect it to still be busy just because um, hunting season comes around. So okay. people that have ranches, they go uh, and start... Uh, preparing their oh, so they the hunt, find so they actually find they actually assist on the finding. Okay, we're putting on an N95 mask so. because uh, we're going inside of their temporary mobile morgue that they had to set up. And Commander Esparza here thinks there's about 25 bodies in there. They are all again migrant bodies. So um, you want to hold that for me for one sure. second so I can get this guy on. You're a wonderful assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so how do I, is it That's go like the that? That's the top part? Yeah, this oh, is the bottom. Oh, crud. So I did the wrong thing. I did the wrong thing. I'm a newborn, you guys. I haven't had to wear one of these yet. Okay. So this isn't for uh, protection, really, for us. It's more for this, mm, well, the situation I mean, we're going to be. Also, because we have had uh, some, because we also test for COVID, if, the, okay. if it allows us to. Some bodies had been... Uh, COVID positive when they come over okay. and they pass away. Okay. Um, we do fingerprints to, to try to identify the bodies and everything else. Okay. Uh, so if, if the body is de uh, badly decomposed or too hard, uh, the fingerprints cannot be uh, okay. like traditionally rolled, then we have to get um, what they call macro photography to come in and do oh, the wow. fingerprints to try to get um, a positive ID and then okay. we send it to the analyst with Border Patrol and everything. Okay, and and just so you guys are aware, this all falls on the responsibility of Brooks County. This is something that will impact you guys long term, you know, financially, allocations, all those things. So yeah, this the has more been going on since two thousand twelve. So you uh, that you've had Martinez was chief deputy, they took on this endeavor. Two thousand twelve was our largest uh, recovery. Oh, how many were there in 2012? I believe it was 126. 126 in 2012. So this is uh, new comparatively to recent years, but not necessarily the only time you guys have Correct. ever seen this in Brooks County. Okay, so we're going to go into this mobile morgue situation. So you guys are along for this. This is, uh, we're going to experience this together. I have no idea what we're going to see here, but probably uh, be prepared, my friends. <laughs> Right, Commander? Just be prepared. Oh, yeah. Okay, mean, this thing comes down. Okay. Not, uh... Okay. Okay, so you said about 25. So Can actually, I go up there a little yeah, bit? So okay. From right here, you should be able to... Smell a little bit. Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, so what happens with all of these bodies? So, um, oh, can we go in? Go in? Or yeah. is that bad? Okay. Okay, so... This is their mobile temporary morgue right now. And he said there's about 25 bodies and they're all migrant bodies. And the other thing is he said some of them are so badly decomposed, they can't get fingerprints and things like that. So, can we count them? They'll come in and they do fingerprints. Okay. Uh, whether it's traditional rolling or by uh, what you were saying, macro, macro photography. Okay. okay. We send off the. They send off those prints to get an analysis, uh, analyzed and everything. Okay. If they've been in the system and they've been deported before, then they go ahead and notify the consulate if there's a positive or negative. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, from there, okay. if there's not a, if they haven't been in the system before, they will, come and, uh, they will reach out to the consulate. If there's any identifications or anything They else, reach out to the consulate? To the consulate. Okay. Depending okay. on which country they're coming from. Okay. So they'll ask for fingerprints from that country so they can try and make a comparison. And then from there, if there's not a, if there's no comparison at that point, then we send it off to either the medical examiner medical or examiner. to uh, Texas State and okay. they start doing DNA. Oh, so it can be a whole process. Okay, so it's a big process. So how long will they typically be in this unit for? It depends on the, on the, uh, process. Where, on the process that we can get back. Okay, so what he's saying basically, because it's kind of loud in here, is basically if they can be fingerprinted, if they've been deported before, that process will go through Border Patrol. It'll be easier. If they haven't, then they'll have to reach out to the constable. They'll have to figure it out from there. And then it's a whole process. How long, like, how long did it take? Weeks? Months? It really just depends because there are some that okay. uh, are unidentifiable. Okay. So those, we have to go through that second process. Okay. Doing the DNA, putting it into names, putting okay. it into CODIS, putting it into and then just reach out and see what happens. Okay. If a family member thinks that they have a lost one, that uh, a loved one that has been lost in Brooks, okay. it's recommended that they go to their consulate to try to start doing the DNA process to get them in the system. Oh, wow. So we try okay. to do that. Okay, um, so there's... That's what we recommend. There's Those a lot of different, do. so if families contact them and think that there's somebody missing or something like that, then there's a whole different process as well. So, wow. Okay, so uh, Sheriff Martinez was telling me a lot of times, when last time I was here over a month ago, he was explaining to me, thank you for uh, taking us in there. He was explaining to me that, uh, that a lot of times they're so badly decomposed because they've been out, and this is a very rural county, like this is, mostly ranch lands mostly right. like very very desolate land out here so uh what the commander was just explaining was different processes that this will go through it depends on the composition of the body really if they can identify them if there are fingerprints that are viable that they can do a traditional fingerprinting on if they've been in the system before that will be an easier process for them and then they go through border patrol in that way right okay so Otherwise, um, they've, they've got a long process that they have to deal with. And what's the, do you know what the longest ter like time you've had somebody, like a body in there for, like unidentified? Uh, not off the top of my Okay. So, uh, but it can be- it's been a couple of months. It can be a couple yes. of months, he's saying. So, gosh, that's, I mean, that's a difficult thing. Did you guys ever have to do a, a mobile morgue unit before? Was it in 2012? No. No, so this is actually new. This is this started uh, green, I believe, in either May or April okay. of this year. Just because um, our funeral home here in town does not have the capacity to be holding this many uh, bodies. Yeah, and there's then, 28 in there. That's a lot. And transporting them over to Webb County. Medical okay. examiner um, takes a little bit of time, okay. uh, resources and everything else. So it's it takes it a lot longer yeah and then for them for them to be doing the process and everything else to do the autopsy to do the identifications to do the notifications and yeah. everything else it can take up to months oh wow here when we when we assist board patrol on getting the fingerprints and everything else the we're trying to expedite the the process to get their loved ones back home yeah. Whether to the back to the country or at least to their family members. Okay. So, so that so that is something part. too. You will like you will ex get those bodies back to the country, even if they don't have a family there waiting, or do you just know where they came from once you go through the process? Or no, because once the body is identified, then the 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 consulate is notified. The family's okay. members are current uh, are okay. Uh, I yeah identified and they're contacted then they contact either a funeral home to to come and pick up the, the body, process it. If it's going back oh, to their wow. countries, then they have to get processed before they go over okay. there. Um, if it's somewhere else in the States, because they, they have gone to the States, because mm -hmm. there's family members here, 
and they want them buried here, so they'll oh, make okay. arrangements with the, with the funeral home, uh, embalming and everything else, transportation. Okay. And, everything. But and the, once and the they, families once, will take on that cost then at that juncture, but you yes. guys take on the take autopsies on and, ev and obviously storing them until you can figure out that and going through that rigorous process to figure that out. Correct. And as you mentioned in the beginning of this live feed, we're at 98 bodies in Brooks County. For this year. The only other time, for this year, we still yes. got 